we're back in mother freaking LA because we got Jolly V and I'm with Den Den and my fiance and Tiffany and we're all in New York City. I'm excited to try Jolly V because this is Tiffany's first time eating Jolly V in the history of her life. It's Filipino fried chicken mm -hmm. and this is like Filipino inspired. I don't know if it's authentic because it is fast food, but it's their spaghetti. Listen, the first time you eat it, you're gonna be like hit or miss. The second time you eat it, you're gonna be like, oh, this is good. And then the third time, you're gonna be craving it. I don't know what they put in that spaghetti. It's so freaking delicious. And this is getting us hyped because I'm trying to go to the Philippines next year. Anyway, anyway, let's get into it. We also have some monster spring rolls that are eight inches long. They put that on the um, the menu. Literally, they say eight inches long. This is what eight inches looks like. So take a good look, guys. We also have some Korean corn dogs. These are the Jolly Bee peach pies, coconut peach so pies, oh mashed potatoes, the gravy. You have to dip it in there. But before we do that, there is nothing like going out in the streets of New York City and walking around we were talking about this the other day like literally last night there is nothing like going around walking in with earbuds and just feeling like the main character like I feel like I'm in my own little movie and there's such a like a stress release like a cortisol release that comes with that experience it is good to romanticize your life once in a while and nobody even knows that I'm being like a weird cringy little girl because I have my very discreet Raycon earbuds in side note I also love strolling through airports listening to audiobooks it just makes the whole travel process so much more fun or when we were in Switzerland there were times I would whip out my Raycons on the very long train ride that we had to Ladderbrunnen and I would just stare out the window and be so dramatic and my whole family was making fun of me and I just have like a true deep-rooted obsession with Raycons they're like one of the few companies that really cares about all of the little things so they work with in-house designers to make earbuds that fit comfortably in the human ear I love that the design is so sleek even if I'm laying on my side listening to music or watching a show or editing a podcast it doesn't jab into my ear which is perfect so if I'm falling asleep on the bed or even falling asleep on the plane it's so comfortable and speaking of planes you can tap on the earbud to toggle between three customizable sound profiles they have noise isolation mode awareness mode and I love that I can also take calls and zoom meetings with Raycons the quality is just crystal clear you can take a whole lot of calls Raycon earbuds have eight hours of playtime a 32 hour battery life plus seamless Bluetooth pairing which is a huge deal that's a huge deal for me because I hate when I'm trying to connect my earbuds and it's not like connecting and every single time I'm like, okay, let me, and then you know when you start playing the music and it's on your phone and you're like, this is so embarrassing and everyone around you hears and you're like, uh, that's supposed to be for my earbuds, sorry. Raycons also come in a variety of different colors and patterns and the best part of this, the best part is that their wireless earbuds start at half the price of other premium audio brands and they have a 30 day free return policy. So make sure to check out buyraycon.com slash biz to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. That's buyraycon.com slash biz to get 15% off your new favorite earbuds. And thank you Raycon for sponsoring today's video and let's Get into it. <gasps> Tiffany, I'm so excited for you. You gotta go first. Oh, okay. Okay, so go for like a drumstick. Drum? Dip, dip it in the, 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 yeah. the gravy. Everyone's gloving up, we're getting ready. And then you dip it into this gravy. And then. Mmm. Mmm, well. Why don't they have this in Atlanta? Mmm. Mmm. How is it? Is it good? So good. Is it different? Mm -hmm. Bro, I swear they pump like sauces mm. inside the chicken. It's so you see juicy. like sauces inside? Yeah, so it's like so juicy. It's uh, very like Asian nose. Here, let me dip one for yes, you. Yes. Okay. And I love that they have like the drumsticks are perfectly crispy, so juicy on the inside. And then add the wow. gravy. It's just like the most insane combination of flavors. It tastes it's like so our soft. childhood. It tastes like your childhood? It's really? Good. It's unbeatable. Mm. Especially the spicy one. Yes. Mm. Okay. Mm. I know it's a fast food chain, but I don't even think like specialty chicken shops can do this. Mm -mm. It's literally my favorite chicken. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the oh. spice feels like multiple spices. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just feel like they put in one spicy flavoring. It mm -hmm. feels kind of layered, if that makes sense. Holy. Wow. And it's so juicy. It's just out of this world. Why is it so juicy? Yeah, he thinks they inject it. I don't know. Oh, really? With some, like, I, I feel like there's sauce. sauces inside. Mm -hmm. Usually chicken. chicken is a little rough, you know? Yeah. Like a little dry. So before they cook it, maybe they like mm. stab mm. it with... Okay, I'm gonna try the pasta. Mm, 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 mm. Alright, Tiffany, come on. Mm. Oh yeah. 
It's very different. Is it sweet, right? It's mm -hmm. sweet. It's interesting. I think you might like it. It might be like up your alley. Mm. Yeah, it's sweet. Mm -hmm. Try it. It's sweet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh yeah, that's your vibe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Mm. Delicious. Wow. I cannot get enough. So today we're doing confessions. Okay, mm. we're back with confessions and we have four people to judge you guys this time. Let me grab it eight inches. <laughs> It's a little thin. Mm. A little thin, you say? Long, yeah. though. It's okay. Mm. Mm. How's the pasta? Mm. Yeah, even the mashed potato Very different. is different. I like it. You like it? Mm -hmm. So sweet. You like mm -hmm. this? That? Yeah. Or regular spaghetti? I think this one. Really? Mm. Mm. Wow. I'm sorry, guys, but I'm going in for a cheese corn dog. This one is, oh, I'm sorry. This one has cheddar seasoning. Oh. Wow. <clears throat> mm. Holy. This is mm. good too, Tiffany. You want to try a pie? Mm. Peach pie? A little. Mm. Oh. I love their peach pie. It's so much better than like a McDonald's apple pie. Mm. It's so good. You might love it. Mm. Oh my god, the peach is so... So good, like the mm. chunky, chunks mm -hmm. of peach. It's like real peach, not mm -hmm. like a. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. wow. Okay. Wow. I mean, a little sip of water. Spicy. This is spicy. Who oh, wants the drink? What is that? Pineapple or something? Uh, Tiffany, you have that one, then, then you eat that one. Because Tiffany's never had the Jolly Bee pineapple. Okay, try this and let me know your thoughts. It's good, right? Their pineapple drink oh, is She's like <laughs> nodding her head non stop. She's, She's like, drinking mm -hmm. it like this. <laughs> Wow. wow. She's like, I've never heard of Jolly Bee, and now all she's gonna talk about is Jolly Bee. <laughs> Sorry, it's so good. Let me take one more bite. Mm. Wow. Incredible. I'm telling you, this wow. pasta grew on me so much. Uh, I'm not at all. I think the last time we ate Jolly Bee, oh, well, mm -hmm. when I ate Jolly Bee was in LA. Yeah. yeah. Do you miss LA? Yeah. A little bit. That's some crazy time, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh! New York's pretty fun too though. Mm. Ah, it's growing. Bis, I'm gonna tell you right now that you, Den Den, Mr. Mango Butt, and Tiffany are gonna get secondhand embarrassment or the deepest shame when reading this. That's a big setup. I was about 12 years old or however old like a sixth grader is. Anyways, I was a very innocent child. I didn't know anything about drugs or gang-related activities, and that all changed in the middle of the school year. My class was introduced to a girl, and we're gonna call her Crystal. Like Crystal <laughs> <laughs> What? Crystal comes in with a full face of makeup, piercing, and even a tattoo. Mind you, she is a 12-year-old. She's a 12-year-old middle school student, a child with a literal tattoo. I thought she was so freaking cool because I mean, what kid wouldn't think that she's cool? Mm -hmm. Did you guys think tattoos were cool when you were like 12? No, I thought they were like yangachis. Yeah. Oh, what is that? Yangachis, like gangsters? That's so in interesting. In China, yeah, I'm gangster. Oh, okay. Like I remember all the guys in my middle school with sharpie little designs on their <laughs> arm and act like they were tattoos and it's the cringiest thing now that I think about it. Yeah, and they would Retattoo it every single, well, not retattoo it, like re sharpie it every single day. And then you know when like the S thing was going viral? Not viral. Mm, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. they would do like that. Yeah, mm. they would do like initials of like things that they wouldn't tell you about because you're a girl and you can't understand with your P girl size Barbie brain. It was probably like, <laughs> don't forget to change your underwear in the morning. <laughs> okay, some like that. So, anyways, I thought she was so freaking cool and I immediately start talking to her. I didn't think meeting this girl would not only mess up with my relationship with my friends, but also with my family. So, pushing on towards almost the end of the school year, we're all looking towards graduation. We're all gonna go into middle school. In the morning, me and my friends line up to get up to the stairs to our classroom when Crystal comes up to us saying how she's high out of her mind. I had no clue what she meant. Like, what do you mean you're high out of your mind? She didn't even know. Like, that meant that you're on drugs. She then proceeded to open her backpack and show off a box of her marijuana to me and her friends. As she's showing me this, I told her, Oh, I think I know what that is. 
I didn't know what drugs were, okay? But my dad had this exact green bushy looking thing too, like outside the house. Like it's very like a plant. The only thing he told me is that it's medicine and to never touch it because it was only for him. Wait, your dad is growing weed. <laughs> what? Wait, wait, wait. You can't do this. The story went from you and like your dad is like Pablo Escobar. Like what's going on right now, okay? So keep that in mind. Back to talking with Crystal, she said, what do you mean? Be my plug, like get me drugs. <laughs> so after explaining what a plug is, she told me to bring her some next week, which that week was graduation activities. And I told her, you know, I don't know, maybe we could get in trouble for this. Then she started calling me words that I've never heard of or straight up bullying me in front of everyone because I didn't think that I wanted to bring her weed. I told her, fine, I'll bring you some. And she looked at me gave me the biggest hug and said, you will be my best friend forever for this. I wanted her to be my best friend forever because she was cool. And so that week came and I had a plan to get into this jewelry box and go to my dad's medicine cabinet and grab some marijuana. I shove it in my backpack and I left for school. And of course, Crystal is the first one to approach me at school and immediately she grabs this box. Then she convinces me to go into the restroom. She then rolls one up and hands it to me after she basically rolls a joint in the middle school restroom. <laughs> like that's what I'm getting out of this. This is nuts. I was a stupid kid and I wanted to be cool, but I didn't know what to do. So I just copied what she did and I put it into my mouth. I didn't uh -oh. even inhale. And then I just handed it back to her. And then when she no when she did it, I noticed she started laughing a lot and being all weird. So I copied her <laughs> and I start laughing a lot and not talking correctly and, squi <laughs> and squinting my eyes. I did this all, even though I wasn't high, okay? <laughs> Have you guys ever pretended to be drunk? Don't lie to me. Drunk? drunk. Yes! No. Never? I, I, on God. I just drunk. <laughs> okay. There, when you're young, you've never no, like- No, when you're young then, then. Oh! Like, 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 yeah. Yes. I use grape juice. Yes! Yeah, I thought it was cool. <laughs> or the Yakuru tooth? And you act like the yes. Yakuru tooth are like shut. <laughs> you too? Yes! And then you start acting drunk with your friends even though there's literally nothing in there but straight up freaking sugar. Yeah, yeah, so that's basically what she's doing right now. She's pretending to be high off of her mind. We walk out the restroom laughing and stumbling and of course screaming and would you guess it? We got caught by one of my favorite teachers. She pulled us in the principal's office and knew that it was us because we smelled like nasty skunks and we were being so loud. They then called my parents and Crystal's parents and I could just hear the shock and disappointment in my mom's voice when she answered the phone. I started crying silently and my tears were just rolling down my face and then Crystal's mom showed up so fast and then Crystal out of nowhere starts his hysterically crying and sobbing. Crystal's mom looked at me and called me a bitch and said that I was pressuring her daughter to do that because her daughter would never do that. I was so confused because her mom smelled just like us when she walked in. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm the one, right? And then her dad walks in. He also smells like me. <laughs> and the principal's like, no, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. What's going <laughs> But of course, Crystal got out of the punishment, but I didn't. I wasn't able to participate in any graduation activities. My friends didn't talk to me because Crystal made them hate me. And my parents were in so much pain. The pain that my dad went through, I could never forgive myself. He threw everything away and I caught him crying saying how he's the worst dad ever. Aww. The pain I get typing that, it just hurts. The school called child services on my house and the workers told me that they knew I was a good kid but I was hanging out with the wrong crowd. My parents couldn't even look at me. Everyone knew when I went to school, everyone, like even the teachers would look at me with such disgust. Yeah, it was really bad. Damn. Wow. Oh, and then, um, wow, some more shit goes down. So during graduation, these two giant guys start running towards her. And this is like adults. And they get up in her face and say how she was going to die and she better watch her back. And they kept throwing up gang signs, but I didn't know what they meant. <laughs> they said if I were ever to do that to Crystal again, they would find me. Whoa. So I cried, ran to my parents, the principal called the cops, and the people that were related to Crystal got arrested, and the whole graduation was ruined. Crystal had to go into foster care, and I didn't even know any better. I basically ruined her whole family. 
I'm 20 now and I still have nightmares about it. I don't do drugs at all or drink. I go to college and work my butt off at my job. But I wish I could apologize to Crystal and I hope that she's doing okay. On a lighter note, love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too, okay? Thank you so much for being you, Stephanie. You and your family are the sweetest souls alive and I couldn't be more grateful that I came across your page. I think middle school is crazier than high school. To be honest. Yeah. Really? For you? Yes, because I think middle school is a time where you're truly running off peer pressure. Right, and you get influenced so easily. Mm -hmm. And then high school is the time where like individualism becomes more cool again. So you're like, mm, I don't have to do what you tell me to do because I'm an individual, you know? <laughs> okay, next one. Stephanie, I need your advice. Buckle up, it's a long one. I'm a 33 year old female. There's this guy in my life, let's call him Mark. He's five years older than me, so he's 38. And he lives in America while I live in Hong Kong. And we've known each other since I was 14. Oh, wow. oh that's like half, Dang. more than half your life. We had mutual family friends and saw each other at family events a lot and we always got along. He used to let me koala hug his leg and he would try to run with my weight, trying to hold me down, trying to hold him down. Uh -huh. Oh my god, that's kind of cute. It was so much fun. And then we met again when I was 19 and he was 24. And this time, you know, it was different. This time, I felt like I started to have a crush on him. But I thought, you know, I'm still a kid in his eyes, right? Even though it's only a five year difference, like they met when they were young, so it makes sense. <laughs> Fast forward to I'm 24, he's 29. I flew to America and we met up with his family and friends. I had a boyfriend at the time, but every time I looked at Mark, my stomach was doing like somersaults. Oof. It was such an odd feeling, and every time he would look at me, I just wished that he would freaking kiss me. Oh. He didn't though, okay? So we just kept talking about books and music and all of our interests, and I told him how much I loved The Little Prince, and he loved The Great Gatsby. Okay, so you guys are like educated. <laughs> I'd be like, have you read like, um, it's a literature, 50, sh 50, sh <laughs> Akatar, Akatar is like literary, um, you know, it's very, it's an immersive experience. <laughs> I felt this pull towards him, but I was also confused because physically, he's not my type. So I don't get what the attraction is. Anyways, we part ways and I had a trip to see some friends in LA and another friend of mine was coming from Boston and I was arriving an hour before her. We would wait at the airport for the Boston flight to arrive and then we would get picked up together to save the trip. I was sitting in the arrival area near the baggage claim when all of a sudden I see the little prince being placed on my lap. Shut wow. up. Shut up what? right now. She, okay, so she's at the airport okay. and she's sitting down and she's like looking probably on her phone and all of a sudden her favorite book is being placed on her lap. And so I look up and it's Mark. This guy flew all the way here and got me my favorite. Bro, if that's, that's not a keeper. A, bro, that's a keeper. literally a Wait, love com Does she have a boyfriend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. What do we do then? Then what do we do? Yeah, what would you do? Do we I go mean, for the true love or do we be loyal? Mm -hmm. Gotta be loyal. So you want it, you don't say yes to true love, real love? Dude, but if a guy flew all the way for you mm -hmm. just to hand a book, mm -hmm. Mm, yeah. I don't know. So loyal or true love? What do you pick? Tiffany. Do you follow your heart or do you follow your brain? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and don't put me on the spot like this. Are right, you go first, <coughs> Tiffany? Yeah, Tiffany as a woman. Loyal. Loyal. So you look at this book and you go. <sighs> like, what are you doing? You just go. Oh, why are you here? Yeah, what? You like Mark? Then I will break up with my boyfriend and then go. Mm. Okay, so the book gets placed so she, on they, you. That means she will go for true love. Oh, <laughs> true love. That's true what love. is. What it means. Wow. Okay, so you have a boyfriend and you're at the airport with us, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> Balo comes <laughs> and places a book no, on your lap. No, not Balo. It has to be like someone else. <laughs> no, it's what? gotta be Balo. Because Bal they're she together with Balo. But Balo's her true love, honey. Who's that? Who's the guy that she loves? The oh. old buff dude. Peng Yu Yan. Yeah, he comes up here. Bye, like. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! Someone yeah. called Balo. Okay, so then I look up and this guy flew here with my favorite book. So I kissed him. What? <laughs> what? Oh my God. I know I had a boyfriend. It took everything in my body to control it the first time, but when this wonderful human showed up with my favorite book, I just couldn't help it. We spent a whole week together, 
and I lost my virginity to him. <gasps> oh, okay, that's really, really bad. I had so much trust, I loved him. The time came and I had to fly back home. We still kept in touch. Oh, cause she lives in Hong Kong, remember? We still kept in touch, but I knew I had to choose. I felt the right decision was to stay with the boyfriend because that's the quote, right thing to do. So I ignored all of my gut feelings and I ended things with Mark and it was awful. I told my boyfriend the truth too. And he said he loved me enough to forgive me and we could work through it. <gasps> Mark and I stopped talking for a bit, but slowly went back to being friends and sending each other memes on Instagram. Oh my god, oh wow. my god. When I turned 26, what? my boyfriend and I broke up. Okay, it wasn't because of the cheating, but we just didn't have the same life plans and goals. I had moved to Australia at this point and I was working on my independence and then I meet Gabe. So I fall in love with Gabe and I learned so much from him and about myself and we just shared the same goals and we have the same humor and whenever I introduced him to my friends, they would all go, oh, okay, like I see why you guys are together. He's my best friend and probably the easiest relationship I've ever been in. When I was 30, Gabe proposed. Like he did everything perfectly. And I said yes. And I was so happy. And obviously the pandemic pushed back wedding plans, but we were so happy with a long engagement. Gabe and I got COVID at one point and we were isolating at home. And I was having a short conversation with Mark when a migraine started to hit. I sent him a voice memo telling him I can't really look at bright screens. So I would just send a voice memo. Then he responded with his own voice memo. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. I haven't heard his voice since LA and my heart skipped a beat. Oh my God. I ignored it oh. and we kept chatting super platonically, nothing romantic, but I felt that, I felt that pull again, you know? And <laughs> as we kept talking, I found out that Mark had this old Tumblr blog that he kept since we broke up and he had written some poetry whenever he thought of me. Oh my God. You guys are really an educated group, okay? <laughs> it wasn't like creepy or stalker, like it was few and far between when something reminded him of me and it just helped his grieving process and it helped him find an outlet for his feelings because we were only a moment. I read them all and my heart melted and of course, I, I fell for his words, but I didn't say anything. Wait, Tiffany, why are you awing? I know, Tiffany's over here like, oh my god, oh my god, Bella, where's my Tumblr account? <laughs> okay, Tiffany, what do you do? Who do you go for? Why did they not be together? I think it's because they live so far apart. Hard to be together. Yeah, and then like her life was in Hong Kong, but then she moved to Australia and then like she ran into another guy, fell yeah. in love, and then but he's like always the one that got away feeling. Mm. <gasps> okay, Damn. another another few weeks passed and we kept talking and everything was still pretty platonic. Then I could comfortably put him on loudspeaker and not care if Gabe heard us. Like that's how platonic it was. Like we're just talking as friends. One night, Gabe was hanging out at a friend's house and I was home alone. Mark and I started talking and I was drinking some wine and I had let it slip that sometimes I feel like I have to catch myself and hold my tongue when I talk to him. Like, you know the feeling when you... <laughs> <laughs> what did you so, giggling about? Sorry, sorry. He's, dude, he's making like funny faces, man. What's the funny face he's making? Bro, he's literally no. sitting like this. No, he's not. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> okay? Like, you know the feeling when you first want to say I love you to someone, but you're worried it's too soon? Oh. So you keep it in and it feels like it's going to come out? I was feeling that. And then he's like, what do you mean? And so I tried to explain, like, you know, I kind of get like a weird feeling in my stomach and my chest when I talk to you. And he responded that he felt the same way. He said that he felt it for years and he just oh. learned to live with it. He just learned to live with it? <laughs> oh my God. So my heart fell a little again. And I just, I finally come to the realization that what I feel for Mark is like I've fallen in love with him in previous lifetimes, bro. Bro. In previous lifetimes over and over and over again. And that loving him felt like the easiest thing. I think he's my soulmate. Okay. Yikes. We've done nothing about it and he has always respected my boundaries. I am engaged and as much as someone is your soulmate, that doesn't mean he's the right partner, right? I'm torn. It's like a head versus heart scenario. What do I do? I can't throw away a relationship I've invested so much in and a partner that I've built my life with. Like I love Gabe so much, but am I throwing away an opportunity to be with the true love? Like is true love overrated? Is it worth everything? Is it worth starting over? 
Stephanie, I love your channel and I hope you never stop and constantly have passion to create. I can't wait for your upcoming book. See that accountability through bits. And I love seeing you so happy with your family. Much love, A. <coughs> oh, oh man. man, okay, everybody cast your vote. Okay, Dan, cast Dan. your vote. I think she should stick with Gabe. She should stick with Gabe? Yes. But she will constantly feel this pull with another guy. She shouldn't. But she does. But she can't. She can't. She can't help. The it. heart wants what it wants. Well, sometimes you gotta be logical. What's good about the current? Game? I think they have this their own experience together. Mm -hmm. You know, and they went through all whatever it is, like good times, bad times. Yeah. And you know, it's just why would you leave that person just because? Oh, yeah. there might be a better person. You know. But she's been feeling that about the other person for like ten years. Does that person feel the same? Yeah, he oh, said yeah. that. He said he's trying to suppress it. Mm -hmm. Well, wars are cheap, you know. Words are cheap. Words are cheap. Words are cheap. <laughs> I mean, well, anyone can say, oh, I love you. Oh, mm. so he's like, the other party should have pursued her. But mm. Gabe showed. Gabe yeah. showed up. Yes. Gabe showed up, yeah. And Mark's in LA. All right. <laughs> so she's in Hong Kong, Mark's in LA. Well, she's now in Australia. Keep up. <laughs> okay, what, okay. Do you, what do you say, babe? Okay, when I was, um, maybe like a year ago, I would say, go for the one that makes my logical sense. But now... I'm all for soulmates. All right, I'm married. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my head's in the clouds, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, but I say, go for the soulmate because I don't see any red flags with Mark. So it's not like, oh, Mark is everything, but he has like a crazy gambling addiction, but like his blah, 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 blah. There's no like red flag I see other than the fact that your lives are in different areas right now, but Okay, I can't believe I'm exposing my mom. But my mom was telling me how when she went to Korea, the last time when my grandmother passed away, mm. she met up with this guy and they had known each other when they were really young. He's married, has a bunch of kids that are like- Wait, hold on, hold on. Do you have the permission, the permission to- It's fine, it's fine. Woman, okay? He's married, has kids that are older than me and my sister. My mom is divorced, has kids. And she was saying it's such a weird experience seeing him again. And he told her that he'd always had a crush on her. But the way he says it is not like very deep and loving. Mm -hmm. It's just like, how did you not know? Uh... Like, And then it's just like, what a moment, you know? What a weird moment. Like, I wonder what but, that but felt if, like. But if your mom and him got together, yeah. you wouldn't be here. Oh, Stephanie. Then where's my soulmate? <laughs> oh, shit. Someone had to sacrifice. <laughs> Someone had to sacrifice. You know? Yeah, but like. Yeah, what? I'd be settling with, like, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, do you want to die? Who is Jessica? <laughs> Think about it this way How would you feel if you meet Mark when you're 60? And you guys say, well, look at the life I have and look at the life you have. I wonder what things would have been like if we were together. Like if that makes you sad when you think about it, then I would say <coughs> you need to give it a chance now. So she should break up and go there. Go to, go to LA. I mean, just come to New York. I'm here. <laughs> you guys can both move to New York. We can sit and chat about this in real life, you know? We're gonna be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you guys did what? Okay, so this is what I would do, right? Okay. Usually when I have difficult situation, decision to make. Well, can I, I already know. What? Get a sheet of paper. <laughs> draw a line in the middle. <laughs> <Pros> and <laughs> You, so you. Did you make a pros and cons list for our relationship and for me and I for Mary did. Me? I thought we did, like you at the very beginning. It. I feel like we did, no? For our relationship? No! We didn't? Oh. No! I feel like that's how, like, that's... Yeah, I started doing that for, like, hard decision, difficult decision. Mm -hmm. And then it makes very makes it very clear, truly. So if it has more pros, you just go for it. Yeah, yeah, of course. So for her, what's the con, right? She may lose... Gabe. Gabe, a good guy. Yeah. And she may lose the life that she's used to, which is a big risk, yes. But cut the pros, right? You look at pros. So, I mean, just run that down and, and see what. Do you marry your best friend or your soulmate? But what if your best friend is your soulmate? Oh. What if they're not, though, in this case? She thinks Gabe is her best friend mm. and Mark is her soulmate. Tiffany, who do you choose? I don't think you're supposed to marry all your best friends, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're best friend for a reason. You think soulmate? Do you think soulmates are real? You think Paul is a soulmate? I don't really understand what you're 
them much about soulmate. They don't really live together. That's why they say they don't even live together. They have so yeah. much connection. Mm. But then sometimes in a soulmate, when they live together, mm. they're just so much. So fun. Tiffany's saying the beauty comes from they're this not is, together. Yeah. And but once they live together, they start fighting about toilet paper. Oh. They start oh. fighting about who's doing the dishes. Yeah. That's true. Sometimes it's mm. romanticized because yeah. you're not together and you yeah. feel like this is the one that got away. Mm. Damn, Tiffany! Want. So you go with, stay with Gabe. Yeah, like let's go. Guys, so you guys are both Gabe. What are you? Are you I'm, team I'm, Mark? I'm team pie chart. Pie T chart. T chart. T chart. T chart. Pros okay. and cons. Yes. Pros and cons list. <laughs> I'm team Mark. Cause like think about it. What an experience to have in your one lifetime. No. You're you're more of like a dreamer and like yeah. a feeling type of person. So what if the dream doesn't work out? Like um, life situation. But it's better. So there's yeah. for her type of brains, like what if? So like at least I tried. Regret, yeah. Right? Yeah, at yes. least I tried. And then like, don't you want to experience one epic love story in your lifetime before you die? Yeah. It's never too late to have after her. <laughs> Look at my mom. She's still looking for that epic love story, okay? <laughs> She's like, I gotta go back to Korea. I gotta go find that guy. We have an idea. Okay. Oh, yes. We wanted to uh, find Oma a new boyfriend. No way. Mm -hmm. Like, she's interested. Yeah. She's just shy. So the idea is that we put out a, like, a ad or something. A bolo. No be on the lookout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe and then we go through, like, blind test. Mm -hmm. Not blind test. Blind, blind date. So what's the age range like? Age range, like, 55 to, like, 75. If you guys have single dads, single uncles, single grandpas in your life. Korean. Must be Korean. Yes, because of the language, right, yeah. obviously. Live in Georgia. Or Korea, yeah. or New York, okay. the places we go. Then uh, please leave a comment. Please pimp out your family members for my mother. <laughs> Oma okay. is very, very sincere. Let me sell her. This is what she would describe <laughs> herself as. My mom would describe herself as very young spirited, and she says all of her friends say this. She swears to God, I've never personally heard it. She says from the back, they say I look like I'm still in high school. <laughs> <laughs> she does say that. <laughs> Yeah, she brags about it and she says everybody loves my golf fit. So, um, yeah, she wears Aritzia golf little skirts. I'm just saying, you know, you've got like a single daddy who's <laughs> a little horn dog for Aritzia tennis yo. skirts. Yo, yo, yo. Call up my mommy. Yo. I saw recently, I saw an interview. Yeah. Like, it was a Chinese interview of, uh, they're interviewing these Chinese seniors. They're like probably oh 60, 70s. Blind date. Mm -hmm. So two of them sit down, and then one of them was asking the grandpa, like, "Do you have any questions for her?" So he was like, "Like, do you feel like comfortable like doing it?" Oh. <laughs> oh, and the grandma was so mad, like, "What are you talking about right now? <laughs> what are you talking about?" He's like, "But you know, because I still have needs and." <laughs> My mom also volunteers at a senior citizen home. She's a very kind woman on Wednesday. She goes to teach them ping pong. So, to, like, and those senior homes, or she calls them like seniors because she's not a senior. Yeah. Oh, well, they always look at her and go, go have fun, you're young, don't come here. <laughs> That's a big compliment. Yeah, she's 62, y'all. <laughs> but she doesn't look 62, guys. Yeah, from the back. So uh, yeah, they be, they be doing some wild stuff at the senior citizen home because most of their partners are dead. Anyways, LOL, boys are so gross and annoying. Honestly, <laughs> valid. Okay, back in 2019 of my freshman year of college, I had a hard time adjusting to the new environment. But then I met a boy. I thought he was so sweet. I thought he was so kind. But turns out he was just really hard. Um, yeah, so he would have to do the nasty about four to five times a day. Yo. Doing the nasty was the only thing on his mind 25 8. <laughs> mind you, I was a virgin up until I met this monster. So I had very limited information about doing the nasty. Even though I didn't want to do the nasty with him, uh, at this point I was thinking, you know, why is doing the nasty even so hyped up? <gasps> I don't really feel anything, you know, no pleasure. Honestly, it felt like a tampon. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> He would ask me why I would never get excited or anything. So ever since that day that he asked me that, I would start like fake moaning or whatever. <laughs> and <laughs> so anyways, him asking me about doing the nasty um, about four to five times a day lasted about a month. And I noticed that my pee was smelling really nasty and I would be using the restroom every 10 minutes, but not knowing any information. I thought I just had a small bladder. Girl, 
Okay, can I tell you guys something that I learned on TikTok? Yeah. I learned it on TikTok. But they said, literally, sleeping with boys and disgusting men is literally killing women. Because all that bacteria goes directly inside your body and it can mess with your gut health, your bacterial health. It can literally mess up your health. So think about that the next time you look at that guy and think, is he really worth it? The answer is always no. But one day, I had a fever of 101. I couldn't walk, I was throwing up, and there was blood in my pee. I rushed to the emergency room. They took my temperature, they took a urine sample, and I was waiting for the results. The doctor comes in, dun dun dun, tells me I have a kidney infection. He also said that if I waited longer than this, it could have ended up really bad. He tells me this happens when you have a lot of intercourse. I was so furious. But also, I was furious at myself for letting it get to this point. I was so embarrassed. The doctors prescribed antibiotics to take for a week, and that whole week was miserable. I would get the chills, I would get so hot during the nights, I would barely get any sleep. I couldn't eat anything because I would throw it right back up. Two days after getting my diagnosis, medication, and going through all of that, he has Broke the up. audacity with her. to ask me to do it! Oh my god! <sighs> Whoa! I am dying! I said no. And he gets butthurt about it. Stephanie, I kid you the f not, I was so mad. But of course, my kind, soft ass was like, fine. And I laid there like a dead fish. Oh my god. It lasted about five minutes. I was suffering <laughs> to the point where my sister and mom were crying over the phone telling me to come back home. I went home for four days and I told my parents it was just really bad food poisoning and the stomach flu. Until this day, they still think that. Now, I'm with a guy that makes me so happy and so loved, but most importantly, because of my current boyfriend, I know now <laughs> why doing the nasty is so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so bonus, this is about the same nasty monster. He asked me to suck his baby carrot, literally a baby carrot, okay? And I was like, okay, fine, I roll. And he pulls down his pants and I get to it. Five seconds in, I look at his underwear and there was shit stains. Ew, bro, please. He was farting in his sleep and shredded his pants and I go, mm, what is that? And he goes, ew, well, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> and I was so grossed out and then he asked me, do you think I should like go take a shower? Obviously. Obviously, you nasty monster, go take a shower. P.S. I love you, Stephanie and Mr. Mango, but I love you too, but I'm so glad you got out of that relationship, <laughs> like, or whatever that situation ship was. Because that's an emergency room appointment waiting to happen. Yeah. Wow. Wait, so how's her kidney though? I think it's fine now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like it. Wow. You know, I, I never understood those people that have so much stamina because the amount of is like all their brain working towards that, that's it. That's all they think about, that's all they do. Because after like once, you're pretty tired. But then like five times in a day, you cannot have energy for like a nine to five. I don't believe it. I don't think you can even study after that. Like five? That's like, what are you doing on a daily basis? I need to know how you pay bills. Cause I would be so wiped. Faking an illness gone wrong. Oh. Hey Biss, so this story happened when I was in the seventh grade and I just didn't feel like going to school. I didn't feel like going to school one morning and I was like any young child who didn't feel like going to school so I pretended to be sick. And let me tell you guys, when I say that I pulled out every single dramatic thing, I pulled out the dramatics. I was hunched over holding my stomach and I was wincing like I was in pain. But not too much because I didn't want my mom to take me to like the ER, lol. Oh, so I go and I tell my mom and she instantly believes it. She let me stay home the whole day so I watched TV, ate whatever I wanted the whole day and it was freaking heaven. Of course when she got back home, I was hunched over and faking stomach pain again. That night when I went to bed, she told me if it still hurts, I could stay home tomorrow. And this is when a light bulb goes off in my head. I'm like, what the f I could do this every day. <laughs> <laughs> every day of my life I could be doing this, all right? I mean, how long could I avoid school? I don't know, for as long as I try, right? So I continue to be sick. And two days turns into three days, three days turns into four, and by the time you know it, I'm off for the entire week, bit. I was living the high life. But unfortunately, karma would bite me in the ass. So uh, next week starts and my mom talks with me and I tell her, it still hurts, you know, it's still a lot going on, you know? And she starts freaking out, cause hello, how could her poor sweet baby be so sick? 
So the next day, she tells me to get dressed and to take it easy, that we're going somewhere to help me. And I'm absolutely panicked because I think that she's going to take me to the doctor or the ER and I'm about to get caught and I'm going to embarrass myself. So we get dressed up, get in the car, and I'm ready to accept my fate. But to my surprise, we end up at the big Catholic church in one of the bigger towns near as ours. Uh -huh. And I'm confused. But also kind of relieved that I'm here. My mom has always been like a devout Catholic woman and her taking me here meant that she thought that I was heading towards those um, shiny gates pretty soon. She thought I was gonna die. Oh, so, um, okay. So we walk in. She leads me to an area where there's candles lit and she lights a candle for me and prays to God that I overcome this mystery illness. Now at this point, I feel kind of terrible for faking this illness and I feel terrible for making my mom think that I was about to meet the Green Ripper, him, Green, Grim Reaper himself. So we finish up at the church, we head home, and the next day I had a miracle recovery, and I was in full health again. Surprise. <laughs> My mom swears to this day that it was that candle she lit in the church. <laughs> she thinks that that saved me. Prayer saved me. But in reality, I was just like a really good actress. I've never told her this story, and I probably will never tell her this story. <laughs> so uh, thank you for listening, and I hope you had a good laugh and continue being your bright and beautiful self, Stephanie. I love you. I love you too. That's nuts. Wow. For an entire week. Wow. Damn. Yeah, you can never tell your mom the truth though. This is one of those things where you gotta just let her feel like the best mom ever. And then mm -hmm. once you shatter that. That's when it's over. Yeah, she'll be so mad. <laughs> How about you? I always wanted to pretend to be sick and my mom always believed it. No, she didn't believe it because we'd go out and hang out afterwards. <laughs> and then go to school. <laughs> Hey guys, is it my fault that I ruined my entire family? Hey babes, I freaking love you so much. Here's how I started hating my life from 14 years old until now, I'm 18. So when I was 14, me and my sister were going through my dad's phone. Don't ask me why, okay, we were just bored. And it always starts with boredom, right? So we saw a website that looks like woman's clothing. So we clicked on it, thinking it was like a surprise for my mom or for us or something. And let me tell you, it was a surprise, but not in like a good way, okay? We realized, this was a dating app, and my dad was straight up cheating. Mm. So we went through everything, and all I can see was just World War III starting. Me and my sister's dumb ass ran to show my mom. Mm. Yeah, what would you guys do if you caught your dad cheating? Would you tell your mom? Oh yeah. No. <laughs> would you tell your mom? You don't think so? You wouldn't? You wouldn't tell your mom, really? Bro, I'd tell my mom and my dad. <laughs> I'd be telling hey, all take of a that. Seat, guys. Yeah. I'd be telling my sister. Y'all never believe what I just saw. This is fucking crazy. She didn't yet. Yeah, I'm like, okay guys, <laughs> this is what's going on. But then I don't know if I would tell okay, like parents are different. I don't know what I would do if it was like my sister and Andrew. Mm. Like if I caught my sister cheating, would I tell Andrew? Uh, damn. But like damn if I caught kid. Andrew cheating, would I tell my sister? Yeah, I definitely would. For sure, yeah. But wow. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay, anyways. So she looks at everything and all the pictures he likes of women. And the sad part was that she just gave birth to my baby brother and gained so much weight. She was feeling so self-conscious and hated the way she looked. <laughs> and my mom is gorgeous no matter what. And his bio is what broke me. He wrote that he only had three kids when he had five. He wrote that he was divorced when he clearly wasn't. And the type of lady he likes was the opposite of my mom at the time. Ooh. Skinny, tall, and like bright skin. You know what this, okay, this is a question. Let's say your ex breaks up with you. Mm -hmm. The next person they date, does it hurt you less if they're exactly like you? Or if they're the complete opposite of you it's completely different that hurts you more i mean i mean, I mean it's better it's better yes really? i'd rather have her do someone different do someone, do someone different, different than i mean like date someone Whoa. different <laughs> go do someone else <laughs> whatever dude i think it hurts less when it's similar because in my head i'm like oh this person has a type but then if it's someone completely different it's like wow i was not their type no wonder it didn't work or maybe she's trying to get over you. Mm. So she's trying someone different. Someone very different? It could be. Oh. Huh. Possibly. You date someone else? Yeah. Like that's complete, total different? Okay. Yeah, so like disgusting and ugly. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah the total opposite. Or what if they're like just like you? 2.0. Yeah, <laughs> 2.0. <laughs> Which one hurts more? I guess the same hurts more. Yeah. Oh, mm. you think so too? Same hurts more? Then you would think why it can be me. Oh. oh. 
Oh, you Tiffany. Like, like are they better? Oh. Like, is this person a little bit better? Oh, the upgraded version. Like an upgrade version of Dan Dan. Ah, uh, the newest I'll be software. So sad. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Versus if they just went ahead and start dating like a six foot two yeah. football player that's like jacked as. Yeah. Who cares? Like you're like okay, they just you're Some not someone... in the same category. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. You don't think Versus they, they turn around and start dating Jungkook. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Dan, Dan, you're just not doing it. I'm sorry. You are not Jungkook, okay? I can't, I can't be Jungkook. <laughs> exactly. Jungkook is Jungkook. So anyways, after my mom read everything, by the way, she was just getting ready to see him since he was out. She tried to look very pretty, showered and everything. Me and my sister went to take a nap. Don't ask me how we felt sleepy after that, but we did. We woke up and my mom ran away. No, like literally ran the away to nowhere. Don't forget we had a newborn at this time and I had to take care of him. He would cry and I would cry with him since I didn't know what to do. Mm. We drove off with my dad looking for my mom. We had just moved to a different country so we didn't know anyone and she didn't have family there or anything. So while looking for her, we got into a little car accident. Yeah, fun. So imagine this. We find out that my dad's cheating, my mom runs away, I now have to take care of a newborn who only wants breast milk and my four-year-old brother and then we get into a car accident. All that happened and I'm thinking is, why didn't I just die in the car crash because this is basically my fault anyway. So finally, we find my mom after hours of searching, but this is when she tells me that she will leave back to America and I have to take care of my siblings since my dad is all about women. That's the emoji she put. That's not me doing that, okay? Sorry. Oh. I didn't watch it. She went. Okay. So I cried a lot and I was so scared and I didn't know what would happen next since I didn't feel safe anymore. Fast forward, we all live together and my parents are, quote, fine. I wish I could say that was the only time my dad cheated, but he actually did this three times again and we went through all that hell again. Each was worse than the other, mm. but if I explain it, you'll probably just report my family to the police. LOL. Yeah. <laughs> Or I still can't forget anything or love them the same anymore since my dad is pretty much a cheater who didn't want to admit how much how many kids he had. Like imagine the kids he left out mm -hmm. and he didn't count as his kids. And my mom was pretty much choosing her life and revenge on my dad instead of her kids. Which I kind of get it, but it's also kind of sad. I seriously don't ever want to get married or fall in love since I hate the idea of it, even though I'm like a K-drama addict. I'm 18 now, and I just started college, so I hope things get better. Thank you, and I love you so much. Honestly, your relationship with Mr. Mangobutt kind of changes my perceptive on relationships and men in general. He's all right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But wow. wow, yeah, I feel like it's so traumatic when you see your parents go through it. And it d wow. definitely shatters your idea of love. Mm -hmm. But don't give up on love, no? Yeah. Watch more K-drama, you know? Love is no. real. <laughs> no, K-dramas <laughs> are, you know, K-drama is a lot. K-dramas, I'd be watching K-dramas and I'm like, I wish I had someone to love me. <laughs> and then he's like, do you want a tissue? I'm like, shut the f up. <laughs> I wish I had just anyone who cares about me. I don't want your tissue! Yeah, that's what K dramas be doing. So uh be careful on that one. Ease up on it a little. But oh yeah, that's pretty bad. But um I think that's gonna be it for today's video because this Jolly Bee food coma is kicking in. Let me know what you guys think about all the confessions and let me know if you guys want like an episode 2500 confessions. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to check out Raycon, link to the description, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Yee!